The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar entitled Saving Energy with Ammonia Control at Wastewater Treatment Plants. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on which time zone you're joining us from. And uh, my name is Michael Watt. I manage the marketing uh, for Exylum Analytical Instrumentation. And uh, I'm really happy to be here today and to welcome you all. We've got a fantastic presentation in store for you today. Um, and you know, with all the recent Zoom calls and webinars that all of us have been participating in, uh, we do kind of miss out on that face-to-face -face interaction. Um, and uh, you know, I'd just like to let you know where we're calling from. Uh, actually, this call is, this webinar is being hosted today from Tokyo. Um, Dr. Tao is in Tokyo and the marketing team is here in Tokyo where it's currently 25 degrees and we're in the middle of our rainy season. So it's um, changing quickly from sun to rain to sun to rain. And of course, we are officially 36 days away from the opening uh, ceremonies of the Summer Olympic Games here in Tokyo, which hopefully will go off smoothly given the COVID situation. And I hope you're as excited about it, the games as I am. Um, it's just a great way to bring everyone around the world together. And that's exactly what we're doing today with this webinar is bringing everybody together and, and sharing some very valuable information. And at the same time, giving you the opportunity to interact um, with Dr. Tao. So before we begin, I'd just like to, uh, you know, inform you or, you know, take care of some housekeeping. Uh, we are using the GoToWebinar system. For those of you who are new to the system, your control panel is most likely on the right-hand side of your screen. Um, you are able to control your own audio settings, and we would love to hear from you. So if you do have any questions, there is a question box within that control panel. Simply type in your question and we will be holding a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. All your questions will be read out to Dr. Tao well, uh, and he will have an opportunity to respond to you. Um, if you have any technical issues, you'll notice the chat box. Uh, our marketing team is on uh, online to uh, to support you should you have any issues with um, with GoToWebinar or if you have any questions about getting your hands on the PowerPoint deck or the recording. And on that note, yes, uh, we are recording this and a uh, video on demand or recording on demand link will be um, provided in a follow-up email that we'll be sending out uh, later this week. Um, and of course, Included with the link to the recording is a link to this presentation. We'll be um, setting up a PDF version of the presentation so that you can have it uh, at your disposal or share it with your customers if needed. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce our guest speaker today, and that is Dr. Tao Su. As I mentioned, he's here based in Tokyo. Uh, Dr. Tao has a PhD in environmental sciences, which he obtained from the University of Tokyo. Uh, Dr. Tao is our Xylem product manager for online instrumentation, and he's responsible for product sales and promotion of VTV or WTW online products throughout North Asia. Uh, he has been with Xylem, with the analytics division of Xylem for three years, and has six years in the water treatment market. And on that note, Dr. Tao, I'd like to welcome you to the presentation. Thank you very much for your time today. Hello, Michael. Thanks for the introduction. Hello, everyone. We are very appreciative to join our seminar webinar today. And thank you so much for your time. As Michael had mentioned, still uh, COVID-19 still affect our normal life and our normal work still. But anyway, please, please protect yourself and protect your family. And still, we should strive on to work and to uh, hope, hope the vaccine can help us to uh, finish the pandemic as soon as possible. Hope today's my topic 
can give you a fresh air and have a good uh, uh, rest and to learn some new uh, technology and to new the new trends for our online instrument con uh, control systems. So today my topic is the energy saving in at wastewater treatment plant. Today I will talk about my uh, topics by these four parts. Firstly, we will talk about why we should save energy in wastewater treatment plant. Please, please, uh, I will just note that wastewater treatment plants usually be uh, be simply write WWTB. It will be easier to uh, to write and to uh, to see. So, secondly, I will just talk about the current aeration control system and what we will do in future. Thirdly, I will talk about why energy can be saved by the new uh, control system. Lastly, of course, we'll talk about some practical examples to make you under easier, e much easier about the new control system. So next, firstly, I will talk about the background. Why we should save energy in at a wastewater treatment plant and how should we do? So firstly, please see this fly, uh, slide you can see. Uh, as we know, the wastewater treatment plant has played a very important role in protecting our nature water bodies. Well, it is also one of the largest energy consumer in most of the countries. We can see this uh, figure, the left one, you can see. In the most of the world economies, around one percentage of the total energy will be used for the wastewater treatment plant. I'm reckon much more for percentage. Yeah, just if you see only the percentage, we cannot understand how much it will be consumed. But if you see the red figure, is this from the uh, wiki uh, database, we can see the top 10 energy consuming countries in the world. Firstly, China, second, United States. The number is really huge. And we can just see the number five, Japan. Japan, only, yeah, you can see only 0.7 percentage of the energy uh, will be uh, waste, uh, will be consumed in wastewater treatment plant. But the, just the 0.7 percentage, it means one, one year electricity production in our nuclear power plant in Japan. So it's really, uh, many electricity has been uh, consumed in with it with water treatment plant. So as uh, our uh, normal uh, understanding, the waste water treatment plant is not our unit for make profit. So why it consumes such high uh, energies? We should do something, especially in Japan, you know, in uh, 2011, uh, the huge earthquake has destroyed the Fukushima nuclear power plant. Due to the risk of a similar nuclear crisis, most of the nuclear power plant in Japan has been stopped. And so the energy is really very big issue in Japan. The Japan government is anxious and <laughs> encourages every people in every expert to save energy. So this presentation, I will mainly talk about Japan's experience and the many data from Japan government. So the data is, has been uh, demonstrated from the uh, scientific and the uh, uh, official website. So the data is uh, uh, reliable. So the so next, we will go to the next one. So how we should do for the uh, for save energy in wastewater treatment plant. So Hope, Michael, could you help me to run the poll question one? Definitely, yes, Dr. Tao. So uh, let's launch our first poll question, which everyone should be seeing on their screen at this point. Um, so which part of bait of uh, WW, uh, sorry, wastewater treatment plants have the largest opportunity to save energy? So simply click your, uh, the answer that you feel is correct on the screen. We'll just give a couple of seconds for our audience to respond. Yeah, just guys, many people are very interested for this topic because there are really many things we should do to save energy. But let's see how our customer will choose. 
Agreed. Yeah. Looks like about 70% of our audience has responded at this point. We'll just give a few more seconds. Uh, simply okay, no problem. On, on the, uh, the answer that you feel is correct, and we'll capture that. I guess, I guess just the most people will choose the second one. But uh, let's see, let's see the result. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, uh, let me close that and share the results. I'm not sure if you can see the results, Ooh. Dr. Tao. Yeah, I can see, I can see, no problem, no problem. Okay, great, so it looks like 53% oh. uh, right. um, feel that blower and diffuser of the largest of yeah. energy, followed by pump stations and then sensor control systems. Yeah. I think uh, our uh, customers really were like uh, from very professional field, and the, this uh, selection is really uh, correct. Uh, most of the uh, customer has been has uh, selected the right answer. Is exactly the um, what we should see energy. The blower and the diffuser will be what what should we 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 improve. So let's uh, continue to the second slide. Sorry, Michael. Yep, there you go. Okay, okay, sucks. So uh, before that, let me just have a very simple introduction for all the uh, the basic wastewater treatment plant process. So uh, firstly, as we know, the wastewater will be firstly uh, pumped. You can see the the right color highlighted will be pumped to the uh, wastewater treatment plant, and firstly the pre millinery filtration is needed because some big stones, tree structs, and some branches and some clothing will be firstly to removed. And then the wastewater will enter the, the uh, reaction tank is what is the most important uh, tank in the total process. And then the, the water will be uh, entered the, to the uh, advanced treatment tank like some ozone or UV for in this disfection or or some with water treatment plant just uh, discharge water to the river or oceans so you can see the the power stations will need much more energy but as the investigation of the Japan government and also I have invested other countries uh, situation almost 50 more than 50 percent of the energy will be consumed in the aeration tank so the point is, apparently, if we can reduce energy in the aeration tank, the total energy in a wastewater treatment plant will be reduced. So next step is, how should we do? So uh, as the reaction tank, you, you can see this image, there are many different facilities like pump or mixer or some diffuser, sensor, like many different facilities. Of course, many people will say, okay, because the mixer or pump diffuser is very important, so why we exchange them to a new dilemma version like flight pump, flight mixer, or the entire diffuser is high frequency and uh, low energy consuming. Of course, your selection is right, it's okay, but you should pay much money to invest, invest a new facility. Another way, today we want to emphasize one way is just add one sensor, ammonia sensor, to reduce the working time of your blower and to save energy. By this way, you no need to change your current facility, but just add a sensor and change your current control system. You can save energy, 20%. It's very interesting. So let's continue. How, why we do it and what we have done. So. We will to, uh, go to the next part is the aeration control system. So for the aeration control system, I want to Michael to help me to run the second poll question. I want to know what your control system has been used now. So Michael, sorry. Sure, just a moment. Just launching the poll now. Okay. Yeah, because uh, be before we talk about this uh, section, I just want to uh now 
what your customers or you has now is just using what kind of uh, control system. I think because it's very commonly used the deal sensor and also still some customer just use the uh, air, uh, uh, just a very simple air control on and off. So let, let, later we can see the result. So which control system are you or your customer currently using? So um, feel free to take this opportunity to respond. I'll just give a few seconds for the audience to uh, to give their reply. Looks like 60% yes. of the audience have responded so far. Yeah, there are some evaporation. Uh, uh, I5FB, it means uh, uh, feed forward and feedback is very uh, commonly used for the control system. I guess our customer will know that, know, know these meanings. And I5 plus FB means uh, the combined I5, uh, uh, feed forward and feedback control system. It's just a strategy to control the blower. All right, let's uh, see how our audience responded, and I'll share those results now. Oh, oh, I guess the, I guess the, uh, it's it's different from uh, my uh, estimation. We can see the uh, uh, the result is forty four percent of our customer choose the constant deal control. And the, the second one is the deal control by the F5 or FB. Still some customer use DO plus the ammonia control system. Oh, this customer is really very smart. Okay, oh. so, thanks Michael. So I will, uh, I will go on for my slide. Okay, so uh, as, how, uh, as for your question, thanks for your uh, input. Uh, I found some of our customers just use a very uh, simply constant deal control system. I, I, unfortunately, I want to say that control system you really need much, uh, you will, will, uh, how to say, will uh, consume much more energy compared with I5 and B control system. But today, I do not want to see much more about the how we control system, but I just want to focus on our sensor. So. Uh, please see this slide. The in uh, the left side, you can see is the current dominated uh, control system, usually by the dual sensor. We can set a one uh, value looks like a, not uh, some some customer be set one value or some customer set a, a range of the value looks like the DO can be set to uh, from two milligram to three milligram by this uh, range that will control the blower to, to work. This is a, a current control system. But what I want to talk about today is a new control system. Is we will use another sensor, ammonium sensor. It, by this sensor, if you buy, use ammonia to control your blower, the energy can be saved. It's very interesting. So, so next, I will talk about why by using ammonia sensor can help us to save energy. So it's a, a, a third part, energy saving principle. So, uh, Jose, as we know, ideally there is no waste energy if oxygen demand within an aeration tank is just satisfied via our blower. But the reality is excess aeration is supplied because the current system use DO as the parameter to evaluate oxygen demand. But if you use ammonia to evaluate the oxygen demand, it will give you a much more sensitive and accurate reflection of the real oxygen demand situation in your hydrogen tank. So the main point is use ammonia sensor to control your air blower. So please see this figure. This figure just simply to uh, uh, show the basic mechanism for NG saving in at wastewater treatment plant. So as we know, the uh, organic loading will be different based on the different time. In the lunch time, the organic loading will be higher. In the, some, in the night, it will lower. So during the different time, the, especially when the 
uh, during low organic loading period, oxygen demand is correspondingly low. So when an ammonia sensor is installed, it can stop excess aeration. Well, during the high organic loading period, ammonia sensor can help us to transfer the correct oxygen demand to controller. So appropriate, appropriate aeration will be provided. That's why ammonia sensor can be how can help us to save energy. In addition, by this uh, system, control system, our water quality still can be meet the regard regulation will be as 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 good as the um, current deal control system. So last uh, last part, let let us to see some practical examples for CV energy by ammonia sensor. But before that, I want to Michael to help us to <laughs> run the poll question three. Sure, Dr. Tell. Yeah. So which treatment process are you or your customer currently using? Yeah, usually there are many different uh, treatment process uh, in your countries and your regions. So I want to know uh, what kind of uh, the process you are using. It's, it's very important for uh, my next topic. We'll just give a few more seconds, Dr. Tao, for the audience to respond. Okay, yeah, no problem. All right, uh, allow me to share the results. Okay, oh, yeah, thanks, okay. Ma thanks Michael, I, I have seen the result. I will uh, give one comment for this. Uh, for the result, we can see 33 percentage of our customers select standard activity strategy process. Exactly, it's really the mostly uh, used uh, process uh, in Japan. Uh, forty percent of the waste, uh, current wastewater treatment plant has been uh, has using such uh, act, uh, standard process. But still, we can see the number two twenty five percent of our customers select AO process for the nitrogen removal. Yeah, because uh, now in Japan's situation, it's most of the uh, current wastewater treatment plant will be reconstruct to to update to the uh, AO process. I think there may be some customers also they have uh, had using the new process to uh, to remove the nitrogen by the AO process. Twenty two is oh MBR oh MBR is the, the new process that is the third third one. So MBR can help to uh, if even you are very uh, limited space, you can uh, treat much uh, much more water. It's really uh, now it's also has been widely used in some in, in China and Singapore. So, okay, thanks for, for your answers. So I will uh, continue my, my topics. Okay, so as you have uh, uh, answered my questions, actually we can uh, basically uh, simply or simply divide the, divided the wastewater treatment, plant, uh, treatment process as three basic model or three basic process. Of course, there are many different uh, configurations, like different ta tank or several uh, replica re replication of the tank. But basically, basically, we can see the three type: one is standard activity the sludge process. This uh, process usually only one aeration tank. The main objective for this process just to remove the COD, BOD, or we can see organic carbon. This is mostly used also there uh, has been, when, when it has been developed still, uh, until now still has been used because they are very, very easy to operate. And uh, the, uh, there are some, <clears throat> some, some new uh, configuration like uh, uh, oxidation ditch also can uh, help the customer to save costs. So it's also still now has been used. But the demerit is the nitrogen and the phosphorus is not, uh, is not uh, totally uh, treated. The second one is AO process. 
we can see an oxic or oxic tank. It's a two tank just uh, uh, combined together. Firstly, the with the no oxygen, uh, no we can just simply say no bubbling, no uh, blower do not work. And the second tank, the the the, the blower work. By this very interesting configuration, the they will have different bacteria will pick the uh, play the play the different roles. Uh, in the anoxic tank, the uh, denitrification bacteria worked, and the nitrate will be transferred to a nitrogen gas, so the nitrogen will be removed. For the oxic tank, the ammonia will be uh, oxidized to the nitrate, so in this, also uh, by the nitrifers. So this is uh, now, uh, this is the sec uh, I think, uh, in the second one, people, uh, our customer has select. It's also very uh, widely used uh, now. The third one, uh, A2O, is uh, this process can to remove uh, nitrogen, uh, um, of, uh, nitrogen phosphorus together. It's also, it's, uh, there will be different bacteria worked in the different tank and play the different role and to remove the nitrogen phosphorus. And of, of course, ox uh, organic carbon also will be removed. What I want to say, because for the AO process, you know, the in especially in the in the second tank, oxic tank, the ammonia will be oxidized to nitrate. So ammonia sensor usually has been used for this process. So I think uh, most uh, some or think most of the customer has has now using ammonia sensor to control the blower to save energy. But today I want to say. Not only this oil process, even the very standard activity sludge process in the first one in Japan, the the government has the the company has cooperated to to investigate the ammonia control system, and the result is they found even in this basic standard activity sludge process, the energy can be saved. I just uh, show the the table in this slide. You can see. Even uh, of course, the AO process will save much more energy, but for the standard AS process, almost 10% energy has been saved. So it's very interesting. So I think this ammonia sensor control system can be extended to other process like standard and A2O process. Uh, A2O process has also has been reported uh, very uh, effective by using our uh, ammonia sensor. So after this, I will t uh, focus on two examples to, to talk about what our customer how to, how has, uh, how, uh, how done to save energy by ammonia sensor control system. Okay, firstly, uh, I will talk about one example from Germany. Uh, this is the SBR uh, wastewater treatment plant, and the the capacity. Uh, cap Capacity is twenty thousand PE uh, population uh, equivalent, and before two thousand eight, it's just controlled by the DU sensor for the blower. You can see that then they change to the ammonia sensor control system. Please see these details for the uh, process of the SBR uh, with water treatment plant. One thing I want to uh, mention is you can see uh, step three and step six, the nitrification one and two. This one and two will be nitrification. The blower will work. It will be the most energy consuming part. The numbers, uh, the thir third part, the third step, you can see 110 minutes has been used. The, the blower will work in this, in this part. And for the uh, step six, 122 hours worked for the blower. So if we can reduce the energy or reduce working time, it's two part. The energy was definitely reduced. So what the how the customer has has do, has done. So please see this uh, parameter dynamic changes of the ammonia deal and the nitrate. You can see the please see the blue line. You can see the DO. You can see the DO is uh, is fluctuated by the two or three. So the the set point value should be from uh, from two and three. When the DO 
while lower than two p milligram per liter, the blur will work. Higher than three will be stopped, like this way to control the blur. But the problem is, please see the this one. Yeah, this is the blur working time. But actually, you can see the the red part highlighted. This part you can see the red line ammonia. Actually, in these two parts, the ammonia concentration has been close to zero, but still, blower worked. So the energy is wasted. So this energy can be reduced. If we stop the blower, more than 50% energy can be saved. So what the customer do is, by setting the value from 0 0.7 and 1.3, when the ammonia value is lower than 0 0.7 means ammonia is really low. Okay, blower stopped. When it's higher than 1.3, okay, it should be uh, blower should be worked. By this way, the control system, the uh, blower blower working time has been reduced fourth per day, and the one year 1,500 has, has been reduced. So the result is lower energy consumption has achieved. And of, for, of course, because the, the blower working time reduced, the, the wear out will be, the wear out period can be reduced. And the lastly, it's very important is the customer, the waste water treatment plant has saved money, 20,000 euro. This money can be buy on our xylem pump or xylem mixer can save much more money, why not? So it's a really very good example for us to, to, for me to share with you. So this is a Germany example. Then let me talk about a Japan, Japan, uh, Japan example. This uh, practical example from uh, a paper published, sorry, some, some, some Japanese character not, has not been uh, correctly showed, but it's okay. This, this, uh, uh, this example is, is uh, extracted from the, the paper is the Nishin Electro. You can download this paper by yourself from the Google Scholar or by this company. So I will uh, focus on to see the main contents of the paper, but we should firstly thank the Nagashio, this, uh, this, this guy, they have made such paper to publish in the, uh, published and we can, we can see this result. The wastewater treatment plant is in uh, Yamamoto city in Kanagawa prefecture. And you can see the capacity is uh, 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 62,000 PE, so it's uh, three times bigger than the Germany example, uh, Germany uh, plant. And the water, when it's treated after tr uh, after treatment, will be directly discharged to uh, the river. So this uh, red figure is uh, uh, you can see the uh, the the place and the with water trim plant thing. So next one we will see what has what what the customer had done. Uh, uh, before. Uh, 2016, they use the dual set point control system. Means they use the dual sensor to control this uh, wastewater trim plant blower. So sorry, one one thing, one important is this uh, wastewater treatment plant process is the standard activity sludge process. Means it's very basic one. So our customer this time has select uh, when when we ask the uh, poor questions. You, you have selected, uh, most of the people has selected uh, option one. So I think most of our customer want to see how about the performance of the basic active sludge uh, process <clears throat> situation. This plant is the activity, uh, standard activity sludge process. So it's a very uh, good example for, for me to share with you. So after, uh, after then, uh, after uh, 20, 17, they have changed to the ammonia control system. So you can see the red figure. By this way, they have compared the dual concentration in the uh, uh, with water treatment plant. They found the dual average concentration has been significantly reduced. The, 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 the right bar shows the real dual average concentration compared to the blue or the green green one. It's, significantly reduced. So the guys result is that by the ammonia control system, average deal demand reduced from 
milligram to 1.6 milligram per liter. But, and secondly, 10, from 10 to 50% of the electricity power has been reduced. It's really big, very amazing because there are standard uh, activities, large process. And lastly, it's without any water quality sacrifice. So water quality is still very good. So it's a really very good example for you to, 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 uh, to, to know this uh, result. And then I think most of uh, the two examples I have, I have explained, but lastly, please give several, uh, want me to uh, introduce our WTW ammonia sensor. This is our very uh, bicellular sensor in, in, whole, in the world world. Until now, it had been 20,000 uh, sensors have been sold worldwide. World. It's a really very good sensor with high accuracy, with long lifetime, uh, very stable value, and also very easier to operate. One thing I want to mention is it can you can use the outer cleaning system to reduce your maintenance cost. It's really very good uh, sensor. Uh, until now, this sensor has been used in Tokyo government with water treatment plant has helped the Tokyo government to reduce 20% energy. And also this center has been widely used in Hong Kong government uh, with water treatment plant. Because, uh, so sorry, this figure cannot share with you, but it's a fact has been used some very uh, important government <laughs> facilities. So lastly, I will uh, pass the microphone to Michael. So the, uh, my presentation has been finished. Thanks everyone to listen to this uh, presentation. Dr. So, Tao, Michael. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much for your time and, and that informative presentation. And uh, just before we begin our Q&A session, question and answer session, allowing you an opportunity to ask Dr. Tao some questions, just a final poll question for all of you. Uh, and, and we'd hope that you kindly respond. Um, would you like a WTW or a VTV product specialist to contact you with more information about what Dr. Tao has shared today or about uh, any of our VTV solutions, product solutions? Uh, just let us know in the poll. Um, just give you a couple seconds before we enter the Q&A session. And if you'd like to, uh, please begin by simply typing your question into the question box in your control panel on your screen. Simply type your question and then we will read them out to Dr. Tao one by one. Uh, all questions are anonymous. So uh, if you are the shy type or you don't want your name um, uh, announced, to the audience, have no fear. Your name will not be announced, and it, it is all anonymous. Uh, thank you to all for um, responding to that poll. Allow me to close that, and uh, we'll move on to our next slide. Um, as people are entering their questions into that question box, uh, just a reminder that this webinar is being recorded, and a link to the recording will be uh, included in a follow-up email that will probably be coming out uh, either tomorrow or at the latest Monday. Um, we've also included a link to the two white papers that are visible here on your screen right now. And again, this PowerPoint will be converted to a PDF and included in that follow-up email. At the bottom of the, your screen, you can notice a link to our Xalem Analytics webinar library. Um, we have a number of VTV webinars that have been previously recorded and then uploaded to our server that you're more than welcome to uh, listen to uh, at, at your convenience. Um, they're all free and they're all available to the public. Um, and included in that library are not only uh, webinars concerning VTV solutions, but uh, all of our brands, premier brands within the exam. All right, without further ado, we'd like to open this up to some questions. Again, if you have questions, feel free to ask. Just type them into the box. Okay, first yes, question, yes. Dr. Mm. Tao. Yes. Um, yes. Thank you, Michael, yes. Mm. Okay, please, yeah. 
Um, you mentioned two examples today um, yeah. on how to save energy costs at wastewater treatment plants. Uh, one was in Germany, um, mm -hmm. the other was in Japan. You also mentioned yes. energy costs within uh, by the Hong Kong government. Are there mm -hmm. any other examples where this has been, um, this kind of energy savings has been found using this type of process uh, in any other countries? Yes, yeah, so actually, we have many uh, good examples for for the uh, energy saving in, in other countries uh, in USA and in uh, uh, European countries. So, if you are interested for this uh, topic, I think please contact uh, contact me. I will send you the example for the some uh, real uh, uh, white paper used by our American team, just by our ammonia sensor system to save energy. But one thing I want to mention is uh, for the world world applications, the uh, the anti always uh, the uh, anti saving uh, is just by by the uh, by uh, applied in the AO system, uh, AO process. AO means uh, nitri uh, nitrogen removal process. But uh, what what I want to see is in in Japan, the government and the the company has do many investigation, even the very basic activities, uh, basic standards, uh, only one ox oxygen tank, it can help you to save energy. So I think this will be very interesting. If you are really interested for this topic, no problem, just uh, uh, contact us, we will send you the white paper for the for these applications. Thanks. Terrific, thanks for that. All right, so let's move on to our next question. Uh, is the uh, NH3, can you measure using ammonia sensor? Uh, we have another type sensor means the varying. It can uh, monitor uh, nitrate and ammonia uh, at the same time, so no problem. But uh, uh, what I showed in my slide, ammonite just for ammonia. If you want ammonia and nitrate, no problem, we have another sensor can, uh, sub, uh, can, uh, can suggest to you. Please contact us later. Terrific. And how about uh, reagents? Are there any reagents required? Uh, yes, I think uh, if you want to calibrate your sensors, we suggest uh, use our uh, uh, reagents to calibrate okay. for the calibration only. Yeah. Um, there's a question here concerning um, energy saving. Uh, have we done any energy saving projects in India? Oh, India. Sorry, I'm not sure how about India has 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 such examples. Please can tell me. Maybe I can find some examples in India for you, because our India team really work very hard and get many good uh, 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 performance in India. Terrific. Okay, so to the yeah. uh, individual who asked that question, we have your name, and um, we will contact you offline follow up on this question and give you the information that you're looking for. Um, I'll, we'll definitely pass on all of these questions to Dr. Tao so that he can follow up where necessary if online. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, uh -huh. Michael. Yeah. Terrific. Are there any other questions from the audience? Again, you have Dr. Tao's email address there for you on the screen. Uh, you also have the info.apac um, email address. If you have any questions that you can think of uh, that you'd like to follow up with us uh, offline, uh, don't be shy. Contact us anytime and we'll be sure to follow up with you. Um, it looks like that's it for the questions. Dr. Tao, I'd just like to thank you once more for your time today and a very informative uh, presentation during your busy schedule. Uh, and also to our audience, we know that you yourselves are extremely busy and we thank you for taking the time to join us today. And um, just one last time, feel free to reach out to us at, using the contact information we have here on the screen and keep an eye out for a follow-up email that'll be coming out in the next couple of days, uh, which will have all of these resources at hand and you can um, refer to them at any time at your convenience. Dr. Tao, thank you once again.
Yeah, thank you, Michael. Thanks everyone for joining this uh, webinar. Actually, today I just um, focused on the sensor, but if you have other questions about our brand and our other pr process problem, feel, please do not uh, hesitate to contact me. I will, would like to answer to you. Thanks everyone's time. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Please be safe and uh, keep an eye out for that email. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye.